Now, John Meyer is a remarkable man. His wife walked out on him, leaving him with two small children. He took a job as an art teacher and then, after offering his services to paint forgeries, found himself in jail. Happily now, he is a successful and legit painter, happily remarried, and he plays the organ in his local church. He joined me earlier. John, when you were growing up and you realised you got a real talent for art, did you look at pieces of art and think, I wonder if I could paint like that and have a go at doing it? I think so, yeah. I, I think <clears throat> it's hard to remember what you were like when you were nine or ten, but um, I always wanted to know how they did things, how they did it. And obviously, you know, at school we, we had those kind of powder paints and, mm. and you mixed with water and all that kind of thing. And uh, I did the best I could, but I was enormously frustrated that I couldn't, <laughs> you know, I couldn't paint like whoever it was at the time, Leonardo da Vinci. I mean, you, you know, mentioned that name. Um, uh, it was very hard to get smooth transitions with, the, with that powder paint. Did you have a, was there a famous piece of art hanging up somewhere that you was the epitome of art to you, that that was what you wanted to aspire to? <laughs> I took something like 12 months working on a Mona Lisa. 12 months uh, trying to get those subtle transitions with, with uh, this powder paint. I managed it, actually. Really? But that was, and then, of course, I went to France and saw the Mona Lisa, which was a crashing disappointment to it's actually see. It's a surprise, see it. isn't it? Oh, it's just, <laughs> is that it? You know, you, 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 I think just about everybody who's ever seen it, yeah. you know, feels the same. But um, mm. that, was, that was at the time, and I'm talking when I'd be about 15 or 16, mm. that, that was the holy grail for me. Mm. Do you ever think you'll be trying to paint things like that and getting paid for doing it? No. Well, no. Um, I mean, the reason I'm getting paid for doing it now, and to some extent um, I have a degree of fame or notoriety for doing it, is because of the crime I, I was involved with uh, 20 years ago. And um, I think a whole lot of events happened after I came out of prison, which all together it's like all the kind of ducks fell in a row at exactly the right time mm. um, to enable this to happen uh, if any one of those hadn't occurred I don't think I'd be talking to you now or even exhibiting in in Birmingham or, or whatever it was jolly good mm. luck that uh, the man who arrested me um, encouraged me to carry on painting commissioned paintings off me the barristers who ran the case the foreman of the jury came to an exhibition that I had, and I never expected any of this. I, I was really thinking, you know, the kind of Joe Public attitude to, to, to someone with a criminal record is not necessarily very charitable, mm -hmm. even one like mine. Um, but um, none of that happened. Mm -hmm. I got nothing but um, good vibes, encouragement, uh, and they took me aback, quite frankly. Having come out of prison, I... I yeah. So for all that it's done for you now, I mean, at the time it was called the biggest art con in the UK, wasn't it? Mm. Mm. It got you, as you say, the word is notoriety. Mm. Do you ever, in quiet moments, regret? Well, yes. Um, and I always, <laughs> I always wonder, you know, what would have happened if it hadn't have happened. Mm. Um, but what you realise is that... You know, my dad used to have this image of a railway line um, that then forks and some, someone throws a lever at the side and you go right instead of left um, and then further on there's another one and you make... Mm. You can't go back. There's nothing you can do to change what's already happened. Even if you wanted to, there's nothing can be done. You can't change the relationships, you, you, you know, the marriages, you can't change the children, you can't, you can't change it, nor should mm. you. You know, you, it is what it is. And you, all you kind of learn from, from a mistake, really, is um, don't do it again. Because, of, I mean, at the time, you needed money. You put an advert in Private Eye, mm. in which you offered um, to do what were called, I believe, genuine fakes, mm. wasn't it? 1983 was the year. 150, 200 pounds. 
What sort of res uh, take up did you expect there would be? Well, I had two little ones um, to look after at the time. One was three and the other was 18 months. And I, I had a teaching job in, um, in Bloxwich, so the Frank F. Harrison School. I was mm -hmm. working there as a full-time, part-time supply teacher. And when the um, detritus hit the fan, as it were, and, you know, um, th there wasn't any way I could, I could come into work in, in Bloxwich and mm -hmm. leave the children behind. They were too young. I had to find a way of staying at home, mm -hmm. and I had to find a way of stopping the, well, what I thought the, the, the social workers were going to do is just take my children off me. Mm -hmm. And um, they probably wouldn't have. But the, the, the media was full of stories, of those sure. kind of stories at the mm -hmm. time, children mm -hmm. going into care, you know. Um, so that was my big worry. Um, so I had to have money, and I had to be at home. And so the advert um, was my way into that. And mm -hmm. what kind of people did I meet? All oh, fascinating people, mm -hmm. really interesting. Um, couple of three or four commissions uh, looking back I can't remember quite how many but were people loved the idea of having a painting in the style of Joshua Reynolds of um, you know a, a captain usually a sea captain looking out to sea with his hand tucked in here a lot of medals here and a wig and um, I would change the face I'd put your face into the Reynolds picture and um, that was all and the rest of the painting would be a pretty straightforward copy mm -hmm. of the Reynolds mm -hmm. Um, and it was such fun, you know, it was great fun to present the painting to the, the customer and then they would say, um, well, we, you know, we just had a dinner party and um, uh, your painting was on the wall and, you know, we said, can't you see the likeness? You know, this is, this is great, great, great grandfather blogs, you know, who fought at the battle of such and such, you know, and he looks exactly like, uh, you know, you can see, you know, people going, yeah, you can. It was fabulous and good fun. And I was getting 250 a time for it. Mm. I could do one in a week, 10 days. Uh, they'd pay for the frame quite often. So, you know, mm. you look back at that period and you, obviously, you, you know, you've been copped, nicked, mm. and you regret it. But fortunately, mm. I think for me, I had actually stopped committing the crime. Mm. 12 to 18 months before they got me. So they didn't catch me with right. a kind of, you know, wet paintbrush in my hand. Um, yes. Because I'd had that kind yeah. of thing that you're talking about. I'd, I'd, I'd had time to think and just, I thought, well, this isn't me. I don't want to do mm. this. Mm. And I don't enjoy doing it. And um, I've got to f find the courage mm. to actually say to the other person and people involved that I'm stopping. Yeah. Did you seriously think about giving up painting altogether? Oh, yeah. When I came out of prison, that was definitely the, mm. the way I was going to go. I didn't want anything to more, more to do with it at all. But now you look at what you're doing. You, you've got an exhibition coming up. As you say, perhaps to some extent you are known and getting this because of the notoriety of what went before. Well, the cop who arrested me was on the phone the day I got back. out. Of, uh, I came up from Brixton. And, and uh, he's, he said, how are you doing? And uh, I said, fine, I, we liked each other. Mm. Um, but he just commissioned a family portrait. What, are you interested in 5,000 in cash? Uh, there's, my, there's three children, myself and my wife. Yeah. And I'm thinking, hold on a minute, um, 5,000 pounds. And then he was saying, well, and there's also a lot of interest from the barristers in the case who would like a little memento of the case. Leave it all to me. I had. Um, what did well. I have? Coming within seven or eight months of coming out of prison, I had something like twelve or thirteen thousand pounds in the bank, and I was paying tax like a rich, and I was moaning about. It. I was a normal citizen, yeah. and it was that experience. I think had it not come from Jonathan Searle, had it come from mm. somebody else, um, I think again it would have been different. But that's what I meant. I mean, it was the right bloke mm. at the right time saying the right thing, and then he said, "You've got to carry on. You've got a talent." If, if you don't use it, you're a fool. And now is a chance to actually use it, what's the word, righteously, mm. um, and uh, just get out there and do it. And there will be a whole host of people who say, mm. oh, oh, you know, you shouldn't be doing this. Oh, it's a 
But you just ignore all that. Mm. You know, mm. just get mm. on with it. Mm. So, so is John Mayer happy paying his tax and happy with himself and his life now? <laughs> um, well, yeah, I enjoy moaning about it. <laughs> you know, if I go the tax bit, yeah, yes, obviously. Oh, yeah. You know, yes, of course. Mm. Um, and it's nice for once. I'm never, I'll never be rich ever. But it's nice, um, you know, not to have a nervous breakdown every time a brown envelope mm. lands on the carpet. Absolutely. You know, it's it's a good feeling. John Wright, it's been a pleasure to meet you. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. And uh, John Might's paintings, those he's done most recently, uh, are available to see at the ICC in Birmingham this weekend. See you after the break. <laughs>